And there was an outburst in the courtroom this morning as closing arguments were being heard in the triple murder trial of a member of the Hells Angel Motorcycle Club. For the term of life without the possibility of parole. The audio recordings are definitely were damaging to me, to my defense. Prosecutors say 48-year-old Jay Witt will serve a mandatory 22 and a half years in prison. Roughly a dozen members of the biker gang were in the courtroom for Lancia's final moments of freedom. If you Google Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club, it'll tell you exactly what it is. A motorcycle club established in the 1940s by World War II veterans. But the organization has its fair share of members who commit kidnapping, extortion, and even murder. Some of the worst Hell's Angels were arrested and convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. And well, some of their reactions are worth exploring in today's video. So let's give it a go. Joseph Lancia. 28-year-old Joseph Lancia of Greenville, identified as the president of the Rhode Island chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, charged with four counts, including assault with a deadly weapon and firing in a compact area. Police say he shot at a car outside the clubhouse shortly before 11 Wednesday morning. The Rhode Island Hells Angels president, Joseph Lancia, was dead against letting Richard Steinino join his ranks. Richard was a prospective member, and all Hells Angels prospects need to undergo a lot of tasks to earn the Hells Angels' trust before they can be officially inducted into the group. But if the president doesn't want you in, that's a big problem. Joseph and Richard had an ongoing conflict, although it's unknown what it stemmed from. One day in 2019, Joseph shot at him and tried to kill him. The bullet struck the passenger side of the vehicle. No one was injured. It should be noted that there were children in the area at that time, and there is a school across the street from the location of the shooting. CCTV footage showed the incident close to the Hells Angels Providence Clubhouse. That very clubhouse shared the footage with the police. Lancia was arrested three hours after the alleged shooting, then later in the day, a state police vehicle called a Bearcat rammed into the clubhouse late Thursday afternoon to serve a search warrant. The state police say they had to use such force because the building is known to be reinforced. It turns out not the entire chapter was on the wrong side of justice. So Joseph was also convicted of discharging a gun when committing a crime of violence and assault with intent to commit murder. Now at four to a story Target 12 has been tracking for years now. The president of the Hells Angels in Rhode Island changed his plea in court today after reaching a deal with prosecutors. 30 year old Joseph Lancia of Smithfield pleaded no contest to felony assault and battery charges and carrying a gun without a license. The more serious charges of discharging a fire arm when committing a crime of violence and assault with intent to commit murder, they were dismissed as part of the deal. But the two charges were dropped after he reached his deal with the prosecutors. He got off with the very light sentence of five years. Joe, why did your client change his plea? We thought it was in his best interest to do so, and he wanted to put these matters behind him. Superior Court Judge Kristen Rogers sentenced Lancia to five years in prison with 10 years of probation on the gun case and a suspended three-year sentence after he knocked out an off-duty bouncer at the Cadillac Lounge Strip Club while on bail. Should you not appear in a timely manner, and I'm talking five minutes late, or if there are any violations of your release. Hearing his sentence, Lancia remained stone cold. No thank you, no sorry. Is there anything that you would like to say, sir? No. A five-year full sentence, all of which is to be served at the ACI. There is a no contact order for the protection of Richard Starnino for the duration of eight years. Lancia will be on probation for a full decade following his release, and he will have to stay away from the man he tried to murder, truck driver Richard Starnino. However, that's nothing. Reportedly, he was facing up to 61 years in prison if found guilty at trial. Perhaps his ice-cold reaction in court and lack of apology was because there were a dozen Hells Angels in court with him. Roughly a dozen members of the biker gang were in the courtroom for Lancia's final moments of freedom. And with a culture of aggressive masculinity where everything is solved with violence, a Hells Angels president could never show emotion or remorse in court. But isn't uncontrollable emotion exactly what leads to these violent incidents? 
Adam Lee Hall. During Hurricane Irene in Springfield, Adam Hall and two fellow Hells Angels kidnapped three Pittsfield men, tortured them, and killed them. As if that wasn't disgusting enough, Hall was not prepared to accept his involvement in the case. In fact, he felt insulted when the prosecutor presented evidence against him. And there was an outburst in the courtroom this morning as closing arguments were being heard in the triple murder trial of a member of the Hells Angel Motorcycle Club. The defense and prosecutors gave their final statements this morning while the DA was explaining Hall's movements at the time of the disappearance and killing of the three victims. Paul interrupted the district attorney and cursed at him, claiming he was miles away from the victims at that time. Over there at the house on Sunday afternoon <sighs> to meet with you. 20 miles away at a barbecue. Yeah. The judge didn't take his outburst very lightly. Bear in mind that we are in a courtroom. Uh, if there are any emotional reactions or outbursts, I will ask court officers to remove that person from the court. <laughs> Paul's trial was almost four weeks long, and yet he never took the stand. Finally, there was a verdict. Do say that the defendant is guilty. So say that for me? Yes. So say you are the innocent gentleman of the jury? Yes. yes. Adam Lee Hall was found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, extortion, kidnapping, intimidation of a witness, and a few others. During his trial, it was revealed that he personally tortured the three men, dismembered their bodies, and buried them. Hall's ex testified against him, saying that he had three guns stashed in a dog food bag the night of the 2011 murders. For the term of life, without the possibility of parole. Adam Lee Hall stood emotionless as that sentence was read out loud three times, one for each of the three men Hall was convicted of killing. He was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. Ironically, that was reduced to four consecutive life sentences after his kidnapping charge was vacated, as if that made a difference to his future. However, that didn't stop him from being smug throughout that hearing. Steven Sanders. Steven Sanders was once the proud president of the San Diego chapter of the Hells Angels, but in 2012, it all came to an abrupt end when he was arrested on a long list of charges. I've been here for multiple cases. I've been here for uh, armed robbery with a gang enhancement. I'm in here for assaults. I'm in here for um, now there's so many cases. Imagine that. When Sanders felt threatened by the case against him, he tried to have several people killed so that they couldn't give testimonies against him. In April 2012, Sanders pleaded guilty to charges of attack with a lethal weapon after he ambushed a group of partygoers in Pacific Beach. He also pleaded guilty of kidnapping two people for the benefit of a street gang, so he was going at rival gangs, officials, and even civilians. They tried to label us a gang. We deny that. We're incorporated as a corporation. We pay federal and state taxes in the United States. Eventually, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for robbery, attack with force, kidnapping, and solicitation of murder. The twist? Saunders never expressed any remorse. In fact, he was in the courtroom hearing his verdict when he said he felt pressured to plead guilty because he faced a tougher sentence if convicted at trial. Yeah, I was definitely targeted by the, by the law enforcement agents. They, they, uh, these law enforcement officers are just flat out obsessed with trying to put me and other Hells Angels in jail. And the district attorney's office is biased against us, and they go along with it. Newsflash, everybody does. However, Sanders didn't seem to own up to his actions. His attorney even tried to withdraw his guilty plea on the grounds that there were new witness testimony. The motion was denied. The DEA had been on Sanders' tail for years, and they had strong evidence against him. The audio recordings are definitely were damaging to me, to my defense, and once they were manipulated and they had the conversations the way they wanted them, that's what ultimately convicted me. They said it was a huge victory that he was off the streets. To this day, though, he maintains his innocence and tries to defend the purity of his prized group, the Hells Angels. Jay Witt. He'll be in his 70s by the time he's even eligible for parole, so we think that's an appropriate sentence. Prosecutors say 48-year-old Jay Witt will serve a mandatory 22 and a half years in prison for killing William Furlong. In July 2013, Jay Witt was a Hells Angels member, and he just didn't like one of the prospective members, 48-year-old William Furlong. One day, both men were seen on CCTV entering a Nebraska Hells Angels clubhouse. A few minutes later, only Witt came out. William's body was found later that day. This morning, just before 9.30, uh, members of the Metro Fugitive Task Force 
observed wanted party Jay Witt in a stolen vehicle near I-680 and 30th Street. The owner reported this Chevy Impala stole it and the task force tracked it using the car's OnStar navigation system. Witt was taken into custody without incident. When the police pressed Witt about it, he said it was self-defense, but all signs pointed at murder. However, without footage from within the clubhouse, Witt could only be charged with manslaughter, to which he pleaded no contest. That's probably one of the reasons that we took the plea to manslaughter, because there were some issues that we, you know, that were, were, uh, needed to be resolved, uh, and we thought it'd be, uh, we, we would assure ourselves of a conviction with the manslaughter rather than a trial where there's issues with regard to justification. William's wife was at the trial too. She urged the judge to look past the stereotypes and see William as a human being whose death impacted so many people. As he received his sentence of 30 to 40 years behind bars, Jay Witt remained cool and defiant towards those filming. It turns out Witt had an extensive criminal record, including assault, theft, drug charges, and illegal use of weapons. This was not his first time in prison, and he didn't seem phased by it at all. It just goes to show what a dangerous man he was. Indeed, it's reassuring to know that he won't be back on the streets till he's at least in the 70s. The Fresno Murder. This is a grisly one. In 2014, three Hells Angels gathered to kill one of their own. Fresno Chapter President Brian Wayne Wint of Tulare and Santa Rosa President Jonathan Nelson and Russell Taylor Ott were found guilty of the 2014 killing of fellow Angels member Joel Silva. Once the three decided they needed to out Joel, they hatched a disgusting plan. Russell lured him to Fresno with the pretense that he needed to fight with Brian in order to resolve their past issues. But as soon as Joel arrived at the Hells Angels clubhouse in Fresno, Brian shot him in the head. Bullet holes in the side of the building were part of the focus Monday by federal agents. The investigation included searches in Santa Rosa and parts of Sonoma County that ended in the collection of valuable evidence. Then the three bribed their way into burning his body at a funeral home. Wint, Nelson, and Ott were all sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. While the reaction remains unseen on camera, something else makes this case truly creepy. According to a 2017 indictment, this is far from this Hells Angels chapter's only crime. This murder led to a longer FBI operation that led to the discovery of a monstrous racketeering ring. Reportedly, the Sonoma County Hells Angels Division has been involved in some of the worst Hells Angels crimes, racketeering, drug dealing, assault, obstruction of justice, and murder. 11 members were arrested only on racketeering charges in 2017. This indictment spells it out. 11 members of the Hells Angels motorcycle gang accused of running a racketeering ring, which included robbery, extortion, and murder. These individuals use violence, fear, um, and criminal behavior uh, for their own personal gain, for their greed. After the FBI raided the Fresno clubhouse, they discovered even more evidence. Multiple weapons, um, at least um, 10 motorcycles, um, drugs, and um, we believe uh, garments that have uh, uh, human DNA and, and blood. These 11 Hells Angels members from California and one from Boston were indicted on multiple felony charges including murder, maiming, home invasion robbery, extortion, and witness tampering. Many of these horrific crimes were done to, quote, enhance membership and discipline within the gang. Honestly, what sort of discipline is this? As it turns out, an informant within the Hells Angels chapter led to the massive arrest. From reading the indictment, it doesn't look like there was a wiretap going on, although there usually is. But in this one, that is so particular as to the kinds of guns that were being used and the manner and means, it appears as though there's at least one or more informants on the inside. Maurice Boucher. If you thought it couldn't get more terrifying, here's Maurice Mom Boucher. At the peak of his power in the mid 90s, Maurice Mom Boucher was as dangerous and deadly as they come. You're probably the most vicious mob boss, and I call it a mob. Uh, organized crime boss this country has ever seen. He's had a lot of bad ones. Boucher's entire life is a criminal record. Maurice was born in 1953 in Kazakhstan, Canada, into a very poor family. He had seven siblings and a brutal alcoholic father and a mother who desperately struggled to hold her family together. His raging alcoholic dad worked in construction, an industry that was ruled by the mafia in a society where corruption was accepted as normal. And so he learned the more violent you are, the greater the results you get. By ninth grade, he was a school dropout and heavily addicted to drugs 
drugs and alcohol. First came petty crimes, theft, and robbery to support his addiction. Then in the early 1980s, he joined the SS, a white supremacist motorcycle gang. This is when the racially motivated crimes began. Later, Maurice wanted to join the Hells Angels in Quebec, and his membership with the SS put him high up in his candidacy. Within a few years, he became a top-tier tyrant. First, there was the Lennoxville Massacre. In March 1985, the Hells Angels summoned five of their members to a quiet town in Quebec's eastern townships, where they were slaughtered in one of the most notorious crimes ever committed in the province. This was a simple civil war and an opportunity to create a power vacuum and fill the gap in Maurice's eyes. Maurice then created a new group within the Hells Angels called the Nomads. Under his rule, new members had to commit murder to be inducted. This was his way of guaranteeing no undercover cops would join his ranks. On July 13, 1994, 34-year-old Pierre Daoust was in his motorcycle shop working on his Harley when three men ambushed him and riddled him with 16 bullets. This was a message from a rival gang, the Rock Machine, to the Hells Angels. Maurice's response? He started a war that lasted seven years and costed north of 160 lives. One of the victims was an 11-year-old boy called Daniel de Rocher. He was simply passing by when a car bomb detonated and the flying debris killed him. Meanwhile, Boucher also ordered the murder of two prison guards. They'd been selected at random. Maurice wanted to send a message to all those who were considering testifying against him. Maurice Boucher was no better than Mexico's worst cartel kingpins, El Chapo or El Mincha. In the late 1990s, Boucher was arrested and tried for murder of the two prison guards. Incredibly enough, he beat the case. But in 2001, a years-long operation called Operation Springtime rounded up 139 Hells Angels, including Maurice Boucher. He was charged with so many counts of murder, it was really hard to fathom. That that biker war who cost 165 lives, nine innocent victims, 11-year-old boy, two jail guard, two journalists, were shot. He was convicted of so many murders and brought so much uh, heat on the Hells Angels that, that they just had to cut ties and they, they tried to kill him in jail. Yep, Maurice was kicked out of the Hells Angels as soon as he landed in prison with a life sentence. Yet somehow, throughout his trial, he behaved like a diva. <laughs> Everyone knew Mambouche was a killer and he knew everyone knew. <laughs> he seemed to love it. He remained proud of his horrific deeds and appeared in front of the cameras as if he was a star. In July 2022, he died from cancer in prison, alone, with no support from his friends and family. Hey, thanks for watching. Do you know of any other terrifying Hells Angels members and their reactions in court? Leave us a comment, and before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and click that bell button. See you next time.